Hi, in this video I'm going to overview Turnitin. It's the other type of file upload that we allow or we have available at the University of Minnesota. So how does Turnitin work? Well, we have in the back end, it'll direct or connect with Turnitin. So you won't really have to go to turnitin.com. You just have to create an assignment. So turn it in assignment. Okay, and then summary. Um, it's also required. So an info upload. So as before, what's read you must fill out. So you can do just a file upload or a text submission. So in that sense, it's similar to the other one. It has a maximum file size of 20 megabytes. So again, this is only for text files. So here we wouldn't be asking people to send you a zip file. It'll be a, a text file that is accepted. Um, so PDFs, Word. Uh, but don't a preferably word send a word document uh, but not the only type of document you can submit um, PDFs will work fine so allow late submission one of the things that will turn it in that is overlooked is that instead of looking at it as a punitive tool or as a way to um, make sure the students are plagiarizing or not I, I like to prefer to see it as a learning tool so people come from different backgrounds different ways of doing things um, and they may not be familiar with the academic rules or how we cite here in the United States in, in academia worldwide, so um, it, the traditions. Um, so one of the things that helps is that we um, can set it so that they can get, can only get one report a day. So here we'll use set, select report generation speed. You can say reports can be overwritten on to due date. So what I like about this option is that let's say the file is to Sunday, they can submit one Friday, one Saturday, and improve on their article. Uh, it will also notice it provides you with an originality score. If you have a lot of sources, even if you have them on quotations, they'll come up as going or belonging, being part of some other document. Um, that's fine. Um, what's important is that the students cited them properly or improperly. Um, so let's. <coughs> Continue to go down, check against the internet, exclude bibliography, exclude poor material. So you could, it could try to, I mean, it should do a good job if you don't want it to include quotes. But, you know, generally, I just want the best report I can get. Um, and here I actually enable grammar usually. So high school, no, this would be advanced grammar. And check for spelling, grammar, usage, mechanics, and style. Three points. Uh, as before, you can set a date as well. Where's the date? Uh, seems in this assignment that... No, wait a second. Um, don't set it out down here. I think it's somewhere else. But uh, just click Save and Return to Course. So it right now is creating the assignment. Let's click on it. So here you have the due date. So you want to modify that, click the little um, editing pencil, and then you can set a different due date, the points, etc. So if a student wants to submit a paper, so see it's synchronizing there, um, they have to go to file submission. So it has, instead of looking differently for a student uh, and a faculty member, it looks different still, but it has these tabs at the top, so it's really important to not forget that there are these tabs at the top. Let's look at the options for a second. Use gray mark, 30 minutes to remain editable. Okay. Submission inbox. There are no submissions right now. Um, and there are no students in the course. So usually you'll have students here. They'll submit papers. Those papers will land in the submission inbox. And it'll give you an originality score. Okay. I'll try to show you, um, let's see if we quickly we can go to a previous course in, in Moodle 2.2 and I'll show you how it looks because even though this is we don't have one in Moodle 2.4 that's a good example but we do have some good examples in Moodle 2.2 so let's go there quickly um, okay so these are all courses We'll go to the test site, it should be here. Let's see. 
and I'm loading turn it in okay so here you go so this is how it will look on the this had five parts this assignment and when I look at the submission inbox I have various submissions some with much higher levels of similarity scores uh, for example that one by Debbie Holster he was voluntarily guaranteed and plagiarized so he's trying to see how the plagiarism tool works so he plagiarized on purpose so we'll click on that one so that's what you have to do click on the actual plagiarized document it load up the document viewer and then the fascinating thing here okay so this class has expired so we can add more comments but then it's not just that it pulls up and tells you how much is plagiarized but you can click on the comment and it'll show you how that comment looks in the original document or the document that it may have come from now just because that's one of the sources that matched it doesn't mean that it didn't find it also in other sources if you found it on a student paper it won't show it to you because of privacy but if you found it somewhere else it will show it to you um, and here you can see you know th that that paragraph for example it's also in a paper in Auckland, you know, so some of the sources, it's not just that the actual text was found in more than one place, which means other students in other places may be plagiarizing that document as well. So that then is up to you in this case, it seems most likely that it came from the publication as the original source, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to tell sometimes. So it seems like this document, 47% of it seems to have come from uh, the Wild Loom. Think that's yeah. So 20, 31 percent of when we look at it in, in this match overview, the more simplified view is just 31 percent, 15 percent for this other document. Maybe this paragraph. Let's click on it, and that's how it looks in the other source. And we can actually click here and view the full source. And it, this is the link to it if we want to click on it as well. Okay, so it also has grade mark. This allows you to put uh, comments to uh, to how they're writing, it's commenting on the writing, so missing punctuation, sentence capitalization. Nice thing about this is you can add more comments. You can drop them. I can now because, again, this file is closed, but you should be able to. And then peer mark allows you to have students grading each other. So once you have done that part, it'll synchronize the data again. Uh, you can even load a rubric in the peer mark and they can grade each other um, and you can grade them through it by, by a rubric as well but at the end you can give them a score here as well if you wanted to similar to the Moodle gradebook and then this will sync with the Moodle gradebook so that's uh, turn it in um, it's very similar to the file upload maybe a little bit more complicated but in, in if you're interested in that assignment that you want to make sure that they're not plagiarizing is one way to go an extra step in that direction so thanks i hope that was helpful